Colossians 3, 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by Hashem, Mashiach, giving thanks to the Most High and the Father, the Most High power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, by Hashem, Mashiach, That's how we give thanks to the Most High, by Him. Because it's saying this, but you know, if those that are not spiritually inclined to know why we say, by Hashem, Mashiach, it said, by Him. But He already told us in Ephesians 5 and 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto the Most High and the Father in the name of our Lord, Mashiach Yahweh Shai. That's Baasham or Mashiach Yahweh Shai for inquiring minds. Right? So, and he said in uh, St. John 14 and 6, and he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come up to the Father but by me. In verse 13, he said, you ask anything how in his name? That's why we say in Baasham or Mashiach Yahweh Shai, the name of the known as Savior. More so than Jesus, because the J was invented in 1630. That's when they started using the J. So, and it tells you in the prologue of the Apocrypha, anything that's spoken in Hebrew and translated to another language has not the same force in it. Thus say the Most High. Thus it is written, thus it is true. So let's look at uh, Hebrews, the second chapter, and the, uh, we'll start at the 16th verse. It says, For verily he, who was a Mashiach Yavashach, took not on him the nature of angels, so he didn't come here from the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed, which is a compilation or sperm, of Abraham. He had to come to the lineage of Abraham. That's why he was called the son of David. But he took the seed, which is a compilation of sperm, of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. To be made the same way his brethren was made. Hebrews 7.14 says, For it is evident our powers, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, sprang out of Judah, the fourth son of Jacob. It behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to the Most High, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. What people? Let's find out. Acts 5. Acts 5. 30 and 31. Acts 5 and 30. The power of our fathers. Raised up a Mashiach The power of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Raised up a Mashiach Yavashai. Whom ye slew and hanged on the tree. Him... Mashiach Yahushai hath the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and what? Forgiveness of sins. So that's the people, the Israelites. Point blank. So I'm going back to Hebrews 2 and 17 again. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren who are the Israelites that he might be a Merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to the Most High to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. The sins of the twelve tribes of Israel. Point blank. No and ifs or buts about it. That's who it's talking about. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted. See, he was tempted. Remember, you can read in Matthew the fourth chapter, Luke the fourth chapter. He was tempted by the devil. He is able to secure them that are tempted. He's able to secure us in the temptation of the from the temptation of the devil. That's why it tells in Ecclesiasticus, second chapter, the first verse. My son, if thou Come to serve the Most High. Prepare thy soul 
for temptation. See? You want to come and serve the Most High, you got to prepare yourself for temptation. And how do you prepare yourself? The same way Masha Kamshai prepared himself. With the laws of the Most High. Because that's what he rebukes Satan with every time. And for all you that say that we're not under the law of the Most High, you ain't rebuking Satan at all. Because you don't know what to tell him. Because you don't know the law. That's what Masha Kamshai used every time. And he was weak. Satan was tempting him. Say, thou must serve the most high power, and him only shall you serve Satan. <laughs> so, this is what we're looking at. Let's go to Hebrews, the fourth chapter, 15th verse. For we have not an high priest who was a Mashiach that was shy. Which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. See? So I say, hey, he, he got us. If you believe in him, go on to the Most High on our behalf. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So you hear that? He was tempted just like we are tempted. How the devil trying to deal with us, do other people, and sometimes within ourselves, if you ain't if you ain't careful. But Amashak Amashak did it without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, boldly. And what's grace? Getting something that you don't deserve. What's mercy? Not getting something that you do deserve. He said, let us come, therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And that's the time that we're in right now. We're in the time of Jacob's trouble. And as we go through this Passover, all of you that hear my voice, we got to cry to the Most High and let them know that we want to be delivered from our captivity just like we would Delivered from the Egyptian captivity. Oh yeah, Exodus 12. And 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. The sheep or goat. You have sheep or goat. But it's got to be without blemish. Perfect. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Not in the daytime. In the evening. That's when the Passover was killed. Go to Hebrews the fifth chapter. Look at um, Hebrews 5, and we're going to read verse 7. Start there. Who in the days of his flesh, talk about Amashiach Yavashah, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him, that was able to save him from death, the Most High, when he cried to the Most High, and was heard, and that he feared, he was afraid, because he was in his mortal body. And he was made just like unto his brethren, just like us. He wasn't in his angelic form, 
He had a mortal body. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. See, he learned to be obedient by the things that he suffered. And being made perfect, see, that, that lamb had to be perfect. Being made perfect. He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. He was an example. Being made perfect. He is the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Called of the Most High and High Priest after the order of Melchizedek. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered. Seeing ye are dull of hearing. The spiritual law. That's what he's talking about. And some of you today are dull of hearing the spiritual law. That's why a lot of you probably can't relate. Because it's all about Israel, Israel, Israel. You need you would tell you to <laughs> tell you what it says instead of saying it. <laughs> this this Israel. This us. We always have uh, been, it tells you in 1 Corinthians 1 22, for the Jews require a sign. So we require a sign. That's something carnal. But the Greeks seek after wisdom. See? So from there, let's look at Matthew 26. Matthew 26 and 2. Twenty-six and two. You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. See, verse seventeen. Then you know that Masha Kavashai said, "In two days, I'm gonna be crucified." Judas, gonna, Judas Iscariot is going to betray me and I'm going to be crucified. The Romans, the so-called Italian Caucasians, going to come and crucify me. That's what he said. Verse 17. Matthew 2 and 7, 26 and 17. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened, unleavened Bread, the, dis, the disciples, now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Amashiach Yahushai, saying unto him, Where Will thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? So this is what he ate. No, no Easter. He ate the Passover. Which is deliverance. And remembrance of the deliverance of the 12 tribes of Israel coming out of the Egyptian captivity. He asked, where should we eat the Passover? Luke 22. He observed the Passover. Luke 22 and 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. It's not Easter, this is the Passover. Easter has nothing to do with the Passover. People need to stop dealing with that because Easter dealing with fertility God, Semiramis, Nimrod, Tammuz, bringing in the uh, spring equinox. It has nothing to do with, thus say the Most High and the Mashiach Yahushai dealing with the Passover. Because it has to equate to, like I'm showing you, from the old to the new. Because they only had the Old Testament. They only had the old scrolls. They had no New Testament. As we read in here. Verse 9. And they said unto him. Where will thou that we prepare? Where are we going to prepare the Passover? Where are we going to go? Where is it going to be at? Verse 10. And he said unto them. Behold. When you are entered into the city. There shall a man meet you. Bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. Into the house where he entereth in. And he and ye shall say unto the good man of the house, The master said unto thee, 
Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished there, make ready. I'll show you upper room, and this upper room prepare the Passover there. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. They prepared the Passover, which is lamb or goat, bitter herbs, unleavened bread, and wine or grape juice. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, knowing that he's getting ready to suffer. But he said, but I desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it we fulfill in the kingdom of the Most High. So that's when he's going to eat it again. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of the Most High shall come. He said, you're not going to drink of the fruit of the vine, the wine, until the kingdom of the Most High shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks. This is unleavened bread. Not leavened, but unleavened bread. No yeast. We didn't have time for the bread to rise. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Remember, the Jews require signs. So he said, Hey, this is my body, which is given for you, symbolically. This do in remembrance of me. He said, Do this in remembrance of him. When the Passover, not once a month, like they do in the church. Say, do this and remember some me. When on the Passover. Verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread. See? When the Passover must be killed. It has nothing to do with Easter. It has nothing to do with you doing communion every month. The Passover is once a year. Feast of, 11, Feast of 11 bread is once a year. Listen. Verse 20. Likewise also the cup after supper. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for many, symbolically. I want his blood. They weren't drinking his blood. He said the fruit of the vine, which is the wine. Yeah, yeah. He said it's going to be shed for many. But we know from what we just read in Acts 5.31 for the children of Israel. Look at... Uh, When you look at the word testament, it's a covenant, or it's a will, or a contract. And this is what the Most High was given that gave us. When you look at, uh, go to Psalms 105 and 8. He had remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. <laughs> which covenant he made with Abraham. And his oath unto Isaac. And confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law. And to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Everlasting covenant. 
So this covenant, people talking about the, the covenant is coming to all oh, people know the covenant is everlasting to the twelve tribes of Israel. Period. Let's go to First Chronicles five and seven. First Chronicles five and seven. And his brethren by their families, when the genealogy of their generation was reckoned, were the chief Gael and Zechariah, Zechariah, and Bilal the son of Azar and son of Bijah the son of Joel, who dwelt in. Or even unto Nebu and Baal Mion. Each word. The main thing I was looking to let you know that the, when the genealogy of their generation was reckoned, how was that determined? By their father. By the father. So, when you read First Chronicles 9 and 1, it makes it more clear. So all Israel were reckoned by genealogies. And behold, they were written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah, who were carried away to Babylon for their transgression. Um, just a It's all about our genealogy through the man. That's how it's determined. That's why this covenant was given to Israel. Uh, through the man. Look go look at um First Chronicles 5 and 1. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, Reuben was, was uh, Jacob's firstborn son, for he was the firstborn, but for as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel, and the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. Because Reuben laid with our forefather Jacob's, one of his wives, therefore he lost the birthright. So we all are, you know, our genealogy is through the man. Even in Genesis 1, so I was given to Judah, the fourthborn son of Jacob. The birthright was given to Judah. That's why you look at uh, Genesis 1, the first chapter. And verse 11, it says, And the Most High said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it will sow. So even grass have a male and a female. And the earth brought forth grass and herb and herbs, yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And the most I saw that it was good, see? So everything is after his kind, after the milk. Grass, trees, everything. Um, verse 24. And the most I said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind. Cattle and creeping thing and the beast of the earth after 
his kind, and it was so. And also I made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And the most I saw that it was good. See, so that's how the genealogy work and the genealogy come through the coming through the father to the children of Israel to bring forth this covenant or this contract or this agreement or this testament or this will that was willed to who? The children of Israel. Point blank. No and ifs and buts about it. It's just the way it is. Exodus 12 and 6 again. Exodus 12 and 6. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Talking about the lamb or the goat. Matthew 26, 2. Matthew 26 and 2. Just showing you how this relates to the Mashiach Yahushua. What did he say? Ye know that after two days and is the feast of the Passover and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. See? Just like we sacrificed the lamb on the Passover, he was sacrificed on the Passover. It says, Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the place, the palace, excuse me, of the high priest who was called Caiaphas. So you see, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders all got together to assemble at Caiaphas' palace and consulted that they might take Hamashiach Yahushua by subtility and kill him. See? They plotting to kill him. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. So they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Matthew 27, 15. Now at that feast, the governor was wrought to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. So at the feast, every year, the governor would release a prisoner, one prisoner, wherever the people decided they wanted to be released. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom will ye that I release unto you? The rabbis or Yahweh Shai, which is called Mashiach. So he wasn't called Yahweh Shai, he was called Mashiach. For he knew that for envy they had de delivered him. They knew. They envied him. That's why he delivered him up to be crucified. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Most I was vexing her in a dream because of Mashiach the other side. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude. These are Israelites. The chief priests and the elders, wicked Israelites, persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas. And destroy a Mashiach that was shot. Kill him. They was crying. Out. The governor answered and said unto them. Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? Which of the two shall I release unto you? They said Barabbas. Pilate said unto them. What shall I do then with Yahweh shot? Which is called. Hear it clearly. Mashiach. The anointed, the Messiah. They all said to him, Let him be crucified. See? 
wicked Israelites. That's why it said in Acts 2 and 30. I mean 5 and 30, so lucky. That's why I said in Acts 5 and 30. Power of our fathers raised up of my second said, whom ye slew and hanged on the tree. See? That's why they're saying this in this scripture. Because what they say in the last part of verse 22. They said, let them be crucified. Crucify them. That was their verdict. Wicked Israelites. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a turmoil or uproar was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude. He washed his hands in front of all the Israelites. Saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. See ye to it. How are you innocent of, the just, of this just man and you haven't put to death? Make that make sense. See how ignorant they are? He washed his hands. Of it. His wife had told him, hey, I'm telling you, don't deal with, don't, don't, don't follow them. Because you suffered many things in the dream because of Hamashiach, how was shot, she said. She done told her, don't listen to whatever they say. Leave it alone. So he washed his hand in front of the Israelites. So I'm innocent of this just man. That's what he said, right? So I am innocent of the blood of this, ju this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, let me see if I can. Um, he said, then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us. Listen to this closely. They said, His blood, Mashiach, blood be on us. That's on them and on our children. So you wonder why a lot of times you can't reach certain people because Mashiach, blood is on them because they're the, they the children of the devil. Straight up. That's what we're reading about right here. The children of the devil. That turn him over to the devils. <laughs> the Edomites. That crucified him. Listen. This is what happened. What they say. Then answered all the people. Verse 25. And said his blood be on us. And on our children. Says so blood be on us and on our children. And some of you out there are the children of the same ones that said crucify him and let his blood be on us and on our children. You, that's why you don't believe. You can't believe. Because you was if you was there, you'd be right there with him. Give us Barabbas the murderer and crucify him, my shot that was shy. There would have been your same words. That's why he gonna see you. And he come back, so he told you, he prophesied about it. In Romans 1 and 7. Behold, he coming with clouds. That's the chariots of the Most High. And every eye shall see him. Don't worry about somebody telling you he's over here, over there. He said, every eye going to see him when he come back. And they also which pierced him. See? you the children of those that pierced him. And if you have children, that's the children of them that pierced them, you're going to get them too. No matter who it is. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail. They mean they're going to be crying because of him, even so. This is what's going on. Exodus 12 and 6. Exodus 12 and 6. See, they wanted to, they, they, they were afraid of losing their power 
This is what it is. Wicked Israelites, but a bunch of sambos, afraid of losing their power. Just like a lot of you out there, you're afraid of you won't. You know us. We're telling the truth, but you're scared. This is why you're scared. This is why they were afraid. Listen, why they had to kill a Mashiach Galvashai. Go to John the eleventh chapter, book it right there, in verse forty-seven. Then gathered the chief priests, the same ones that said, Give us Barabbas to murder and crucify Mashiach Yahweh Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. Talk about a Mashiach Yahweh This is when he raised Lazarus from the dead after he had died for four days. He did many miracles. Listen to what they said. If we let him thus alone, all men, all men will believe on him. And the Romans, who are the so-called Italian Caucasian, who were part of earth at the time, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. See there? They worried about losing their power. Under the Romans. They're going to come. And take them out of their place. Of authority. Over the people. And nation. And one of them named Caiaphas. Being the high priest that, year, that same year. Said unto them. You know nothing at all. Nor consider that it is expedient. For us. That one man should die for the people. And the people are the twelve tribes of Israel. And that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he, not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that a Mashiach Yahweh should die for that nation. Those people. As we read, for the sins of the children of Israel in Acts 5 and 31. And not for that nation only, but, for, but that also he shall gather together in one the children of the Most High that were scattered abroad. See? That's why you read James 1 and 1. It says, to the twelve tribes of Israel which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Because we were scattered among all nations. Because we didn't follow the laws of the Most High. We ain't follow the statutes of the Most High. We ain't follow the commandments of the Most High. Nor his judgments. And he told us in Deuteronomy 28, 64. He's going to scatter us among all nations. Because we were disobedient. Then from that day forth. They took counsel. Together. For to put him to death. To counsel to put him to death. And that's what we just read about. How they said crucify him. And let his blood be on us and on our children. Exodus 12 and 6 again. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day. This is a sheep or a girl. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. You heard them. All the congregation was saying what? The assembly of the congregation was saying what? Crucify him. Let his blood be on us and on our children. Who is he? The Lamb of the Most High. But see, if you can't see anything spiritually and symbolic, you can't. You don't understand that. That don't make any sense to you. You got to have a lamb. An actual lamb. Before you believe. Because you can't see with your spiritual eye. You've got to be spiritual to see these things. Look at John 1.29. The next day, 
John seer for Mashiach Yahweh Shai, coming unto him, and said, Behold the Lamb of the Most High, which taketh away the sin of the world. The sin of everyone? Oh, that, does that contradict Acts 5.31? No. It does not. What world is it talking about? Since he said going to take away the sin of the world, let's go to Isaiah 45 and 17. Listen at this closely, because he said he's going to take this away the sins of the world. But Israel, that's the 12 tribes of Israel, shall be saved in the Most High. Bahashama Mashiach Yahushua. With an everlasting salvation. I mean, it's going to last forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. We got next. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. I mean, confused. World. That's that world without end. See? Israel is that world without end. Since we're in Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah 53, 53rd chapter. And I'm going to give you right to the scripture that shows you clearly he is that lamb. I already said the lamb of the most high. And then we're going to go back. Go to Isaiah 53 and 7. He who was a Mashiach Yavashai was oppressed. And he who was a Mashiach Yahushai was afflicted. Yet he who was a Mashiach Yahushai opened not his mouth. When you go through the death that he suffered, that's written in Matthew, Luke, and John. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep, which is a lamb, before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. That's why they hit him. So you're not going to answer? You're not going to answer? He didn't say no. Going back to verse 1. Who have relieved our report? And to whom is the arm of the Most High revealed? The arm of the Most High is right arm. Right hand, right arm, all together. Mashiach Yahushua. On the right hand side of the Most High. His right arm. For he shall, for he, the arm of the Most High, mind you, Mashiach Yahushua shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form, no comeliness. I mean, he wasn't handsome. And when we shall see him, shall his future. I'm not talking during the time of Isaiah. Come on, when the Mashiach of Ashai shall come on the earth. When we shall, which is the future, see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He wasn't a handsome man. There's no beauty. There was no beauty that we should desire him. Could you consider he was ugly? Because it says there is no beauty. He was, it says, it says, he have no form nor comeliness. He wasn't all built. He say out of pot belly. And when we shall see him, he is, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows. And acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. See. Always been the same condition with Israel. Not esteeming. But Mashiach Yahweh shot. Been that same way. You can go all the way back to the wilderness. Still. 
The same old, same old. Nothing new under the sun. Look. Go to Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. Verse 15. But Jezreel, another name for we the children of Israel, waxed fat. We living good. We was living large. And kick, kicking it. You know what I mean? It's nothing new under the sun. That's fat, man. You living fat. You know, we kicking it. We was kicking it. And kicked. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Living large. Then he forsook the most high which made him and lightly esteemed the rock. You hear this? Lightly esteemed Hamashiach Yahushai, who is the rock of his salvation. See? They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, strange idols. With abominations provoked him, them, Excuse me, with abominations provoke they him to anger. So when you keep on doing wrong and doing these abominable acts, you think the Most High love you? When you, you say, oh, it's okay, all you gotta do is pray over this pig, pray over this pork chops, pray over this, this, these chitlins, pray over this shrimp, crab, lobster, catfish, abominations. Oh, I can do this, all I gotta do is go to church and Most High. Gonna forgive me for what I did wrong, but I don't sin because I ain't under the law, which is a lie. Why are you go in front of the preacher and bow down and pray to ask for forgiveness for what? From what? From your sins. His sin is a transgression of the Most High's law. Period. See? But if you think the Most High loves you, doing abominable things? No, you provoke him to anger. That's why he started jacking you up. Oh, you got all this money, but then your health is jacked up. Oh, you got good health, but then next thing you know, your money is messed up. Oh, he messed with your children. He do something to your family. Somebody you love. Your wife. Your husband. Your children. Lose your job. Provoke the most out of anger. Car accident. Most out of one that Wound and heal. He the one that killed and make a lie. Or kill somebody that you love. Provoke him to anger. They sacrifice him to devils, see? Sacrifice him to devils, not to the most high. To idols or gods whom they knew not. Just like a lot of you don't know anything about where your religion started from. Or where your ancestors started following the religious instructions to the Negroes in the United States of America. They call all of us niggas in Acts the 13th chapter, the first verse. You don't know when it began. You don't know nothing about it. You, all you're doing is following traditions of men and not the word of the Most High. That's why he was angry, angry, and still angry. They sacrificed unto devils, not to the Most High, to gods or idols whom they knew not, to new eyes, to new gods, new idols that came newly up. See? Where was the Catholic Church or, or the, Beth, the, the Baptist and the Methodist and the Church of God in Christ and Jehovah Witness and Seventh-day Adventists in 1492? When they came up here to America. Hello. In the 1500s. When we was enslaved. In the 1600s when we was enslaved. And you looking over there watching them doing whatever they doing. Until this day. And following their traditions. They had overseer over saying this is where you're going to do it. Like I said the religious instructions to the Negroes in the United States of America. Created in 1620. Until this day. Y'all better look at that because. With the Willie Lynch, the Stockholm Syndrome, and the religious destruction to the Negroes in the United States of America, this is what you caught up in. And I don't care if you call yourself a Hebrew Israelite, you still caught up in that if you ain't looked at it to see how you're not going to follow what it is that they program us to do from our ancestry. It's in the blood. 
That's why you got to drain yourself from the abominations of the filthy, wicked acts of abominations of, that's against the Most High. That's within you. It's change. Become a new creature. A new man. Or a new woman. To be really born again. That's what this is all about. And not follow the way of our enemies. You would say they sacrificing the devils not to the most high. To gods or idols whom they knew not. To new gods, new idols that came newly up. Like these religions. The Bible always been here. That's what we dealing with. As you realize, we dealing with this word right here, this Bible. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock, listen, of a Mashiach Yahweh that begot thee, thou art unmindful, and have forgotten the Most High that formed thee. See. And when the Most High, power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob saw it, he abhorred them. He hated us because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what the end shall be. For they are a very forward generation of children in whom is no faith. See? That happened to us. That's why you're looking at the same people that that's written about. Here it is telling you what would prophesy what would happen with those same people, those same spirits. Remember, it said, let us be on us and on our children. Those same spirits we just read about in Deuteronomy, here they are again in authority as chief high priests, scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, all these different Israelites that said, Crucify a Mashiach Yahweh Shai and let his blood be on us and on our children. The Lamb of the Most High. Going back to Isaiah 53 and 3. He is despised and rejected of men. See? And if you don't think that's the heat of rock, then listen, let me prove that in 1 Corinthians. You can read the whole thing, but it's going to tell you who that rock was. That we just read about. Ten and four. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. It was in the wilderness. What we just read about. For they drank of that spiritual rock. Spiritual now. Spiritual rock. You can't see it. You can't be spiritual. You ain't going to see it. That's why I said spiritual rock. That followed them. And that rock was a Mashiach. Where is that? But if you're not spiritual, you ain't going to see nothing. This is talking to those that spirit have their spiritual eye to be able to understand the law of the spirit to see beyond what you have to remember it said the Jews require a sign before that without that sign. They always ask for a sign. They always want to see something carnal. That's why the most had to give us carnal things. So a lot of you can't see the spiritual because you're too carnal. Isaiah 53 and 3. He is despised. It's a Mashiach Yahweh Shai. And rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. That's what most of us say. Hey. So we did what we did. He hid his face from us. But we hid, his, hid our face from our Savior, our Mashiach Yahweh Shai, when he came in the flesh. They don't talk about this. I don't hear them talk about this. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of the Most High, and afflicted. See, the Most High did this. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Who was Isaiah? Isaiah is an Israelite, a Hebrew Israelite. That hour is talking about we as a family of people, the 12 tribes of Israel. 
He was wounded for hours, and we read in, the, in Acts 5.31 how it said repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, the things that we've done wrong and breaking the laws of the Most High. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. This is all we, the children of Israel, like sheep, have gone astray, gone away from the Most High, being obedient to his laws, statutes, commandments. We have turned everyone to his own way. And it's really prevalent now, all the, the things that people are, it's just sin is being tolerated and accepted. In our day and time, we see it. So we have turned everyone to his own way. I'm going to do my own way. He said he's the way. I'm going to check out what in St. John 14 and 6. And he answered and said, I am the way. No. Everybody want to do it their own way. And when he start whooping that butt, we're going to see. When you cry to him, he's going to laugh at you. He's going to mock it, mock you. Because you're hearing, you're not receiving it. You let it go in one ear and out the other ear. So he's going to say, hmm. when you cry to me, I'm going to laugh at you. I ain't even hear you. Because you don't want to hear the truth. You don't want to come and learn. People don't have time. They got other things to do. Okay. He going to have other things to do when you need him. Because he our only hope. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Most High have laid on him, Mashiach Gawashah, the iniquity of us all. You know, that's talking to the children of Israel. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted. Yet he opened out his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Because he is the lamb of the most high. Just like the lamb we had to slaughter. For the Passover. He was the ultimate lamb. The ultimate sacrifice. Now we have to be. A, but let our bodies be a living sacrifice. Which is your reasonable service. And as a sheep before her shears. Is dumb. So he opened out his mouth. He didn't say anything. Because he knew. He had to go through this. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people. Was he stricken? See? The whole side, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was, took on the transgression, the sins of the Most High's people. That's the good news. But see, we want to find other ways to, like I say, our own way to justify wickedness and doing the things that we're doing. Then when he when he chastised our people, then they want to cry to him like, Oh, Mosai, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Forgive me. But it's too late. Look, Exodus 3 and 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. See? That's the most high's people. Children of Israel. See? When he says in verse 8, for he was cut out, he was cut off out of the land of the living, which is the land of Israel, the land that the Most High loved, for the transgression of my people. It just shows you that his people are the children of Israel, 12 tribes of Israel. For was he stricken, see? And he made his grave with the wicked. We had one wicked man on one side and another man. We man on the other side of him. And with the rich in his death. Because the rich man came and begged for his body to bury it in the tomb. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Remember that lamb had to be without blemish. And he was asked the same. Verse 10, yet it pleased the Most High to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul, his body, an offering for sin. 
made his body, his soul, an offering for sin. He shall